Rowing and sculling are safe sports and very few accidents involving injury occur. Lots of people fall in, sometimes through their own mistakes, sometimes through the mistakes of others. But by behaving sensibly, these mistakes can be reduced and injury avoided. This video is about avoiding problems, both for ourselves and those around us. So we'll start with a look at what a typical river has in store for us. Remember that where you train may be very different from what we're showing you, so you must learn your local rules. We start on a flat, calm river. There's no traffic and we can follow the stream, positioning ourselves to the right-hand side of the river. This is the right-hand rule. We share our rivers with many others and they have rights, so we must be considerate. Now you'll see that other traffic is building up. Remember that not everyone knows the rules, so take care. And when meeting other craft, use the right-hand rule at all times. Look for signs of strong stream conditions, eddies around posts, debris on the water, fallen trees, strong streams under bridge arches and around obstructions. And when danger is indicated, don't take risks. And remember, you probably shouldn't be there at all. Coaching launches can create difficulties for others. Be considerate. Sometimes we are very fortunate we train in sheltered water, but even in this situation we have to consider the weather conditions, such as the strength and direction of the wind, and of course others using the water at the same time. Safety is important in the boathouse, even one as spacious and roomy as this. Whatever the size of building you have available for storage of your boats, there are always potential hazards to watch out for. Look out for riggers at ankle height and head height. Watch out for bows and sterns also sticking out. There's a trailer here on our left and that's got racking sticking out. Look at this trip hazard under the trailer. And here's a trestle that's been left out. However you store your blades, make sure they are stored correctly and safely. Safety information should be displayed in all boathouses. Here we've got a display board showing the rules of the reach and the circulation pattern of this particular lake. We also have instructions displayed showing where to assemble in case of a fire. And underneath that we have the emergency numbers also clearly displayed, giving directions on which numbers to contact in case of emergency. On the table here we've got life jackets, the accident book, throw lines, the first aid box and thermal blankets all close to hand before an outing takes place. Life jackets are readily available for the next crew to go out. The outing board should show the day's conditions and who may boat. All crews must log out and back in for every outing. Your club should have all these items ready to hand and you should know where they are and how to use them. Clearly displayed as the water safety code, each club affiliated to the Amateur Rowing Association must make sure its members are aware of the code and adhere to it. I'm going to be checking the boat from one end down to the other, starting with the bow ball. This needs to be on securely and it needs to be of the right material because in a collision this is soft but it also gives way. So we'll avoid piercing anything or anyone that we might hit. We then move on to the number slot which should be secure. We've now got a vent which uh, helps the buoyancy. If this is open, then obviously water will get in. We don't have the buoyancy within this tank. This buoyancy means that we never have to leave the boat in the case of a capsize or a sinking and should never leave the boat. Then check underneath the boat for holes, for scratches. This can be done both before and after an outing. We'll also check the canvas on the top. This can be knocked when the boat is being taken off the racks and being put on again at the end of a session. This V must be secure, 
any splashes will come through, come over the cocks. We've got a front loader here, so the cocks lies in the front of the boat. This will affect the sort of life jacket that we use. It's got to be a life jacket that doesn't inflate on contact with water. In the case of a capsize, the cocks will get thrust back up into the boat. Whilst down here, we check that this steering column is working, and at the same time, we check the rudder strings to see whether they're straight or crossed, because pushing the rudder that way, with them straight, will turn one way, with them crossed, they'll actually turn the opposite way. We need to check this strapping, which goes on the back of the cocks, and the headrest. The crew are going to be pushing the cocks into this, so this needs to be comfortable. This bracing needs to be checked as it holds the boat together. We now have another buoyancy tank. Check that that is secure. Check the slide beds to make sure that they don't move. And check that the seat runs smoothly. We're now onto the rigger. We're checking that this doesn't move. And the swivel must swivel freely. And the gate locks and shuts. With the feet, we have a heel restraint. This should not raise the heel above the fixed point of the feet. The whole point of this is that, in the case of an accident, that the foot comes out on its own. We also need to check the foot stretcher, that it's not loose, and that it's on straight, or it can affect somebody's back. Now, although the cox should be checking the boat, the cox, in my view, should also make sure that the crew help and check. That gives a double check every time. We're coming down to yet another buoyancy tank. Boats have plenty of buoyancy in them. There is no reason ever to leave a boat. Even if it sinks, it will only stay just under the surface of the water, so you should always stay with the boat. We're checking again underneath, and we've got a fin here that needs to be on solid and straight, otherwise the boat will veer all over the place. Check that the rudder moves freely and that it doesn't get caught on the bottom of the boat. I would now move round to the other two riggers, and that's a complete check from end to end. As today's crew assembles, note how the cox controls the crew with clear, concise instructions. OK then, hands on. Lifting on three, two, three, lift. Just watch the riggers above. OK then, stroking two, hold in. Bow on three, under, go. Okay, then walk it out. The crew will now meet the coach at the water's edge. The coach will make a risk assessment of today's boating conditions. Afternoon, everyone. How are you all feeling today? Yeah, yeah ready to go. Um, it's been raining today, and we can see it's a bit grey overhead, so it could rain while we're out there. So I just want to check that you've all got plenty of layers on, and you've all got splash tops on, which is great. And Clark. I can see you've got your hat and gloves there. Make sure you take them out with you into the boat, OK? Because it could be cold out there. Uh, we can see the stream today. Um, and basically, we want to boat in the safest way possible, so make sure we put the bow into the stream, OK? So we'll have to turn the boat around before we get afloat. OK, Clark, have we checked the boat over? Yep. Bow ball and everything's working order, OK? And everyone's checked their seats and their riggers? Yep. Great, OK. Well, Sam, if you can just take everyone for a quick warm-up, Myself and Clark will go and uh, sign the boat out. Okay. Alright? What you have seen here is a simple routine to be carried out by all coaches for any activity. It is a risk assessment and this diagram begins the process. We identify risks present in any activity and assess their severity on a scale of 1 to 3. 1 being minor, only slightly harmful, 3 being major, of serious concern and extremely harmful, and 2, although harmful, is acceptable. 
We then look at the likelihood or probability of the event occurring and assess this on a similar scale. One is highly unlikely, three is very likely to occur and two is possible but unlikely. Where a risk is minor and highly unlikely to happen, the risk assessment value is one and can be accepted. Where the risk in the activity is major and very likely to happen, the risk assessment value rises to nine and the risk in the activity is unacceptable. The coach or activity organiser must take steps to reduce one of the factors so that the activity becomes safe. The completed risk level estimator provides an assessment value for every combination of risk and probability. Our crew is ready to boat and the coxswain is now totally in charge, giving commands clearly. Step to the edge, turn in, ride out, watch the rod up. Whilst two people hold the boat, the others get the blades. Note in this example that Bowside put their blades in the swivels first, lock up their gates and hold their riggers, allowing Strokeside to get in and put their blades in the swivels and lock up their gates. Only when this has been done can the remainder of the crew get into the boat. OK, everybody ready? Pushing off then, let's go. Here you can see our single sculler carrying his boat to the water. He knows where the point of balance is and carries the boat on his shoulder with the bows forward. With a sculling boat, a little bit more care is required when getting afloat, but it's essentially the same as when getting into a rowing boat. The same safety check should be carried out on your skull as we showed you earlier with the four. The sculler places the stroke side blade in the swivel and locks the gate. He then places the bow side skull in the swivel and locks the skull handles together to form a stable and symmetrical point of balance with his left hand. He places his left foot between the runners and lowers himself onto the seat, right hand holding the rigger. This is called the three point balance. Here we have it again, left hand holding the blades locked, left foot in the boat, right hand on the rigger. With knees and body weight towards the bank, he can reach out to lock the bow side gate. Feet settled, he's ready to go. At the end of his outing, when he returns to the bank, he will leave the boat using the reverse sequence that he used getting in. Coaching launches often have to serve two purposes, firstly to carry the coach and secondly as the first line of rescue in case of emergency. Apart from dressing adequately, the coach has to ensure that basic equipment is carried in the launch at all times. Firstly, there must be a launch rescue kit. This contains a throw line, first aid box, a spare life jacket, knife and whistle and thermal blankets. Secondly, in the launch there must be a baler, life ring and throw line, a paddle, adequate fuel for the session, an anchor and a kill cord for the engine. When coming into the landing stage, care needs to be taken. Okay, and the steersman up. approaches the stage against the stream. Now. This steadies the boat and allows better control. Okay, just grab the side. Having reached the landing stage, the coxswain steps out of the boat and holds the boat steady whilst bow side leave the boat. Can I 
and Strook side under your gates. With both side holding the riggers, Strook side can release their gates and step out. Blades should always be carried with spoons facing forwards. Okay then, hands on. To lift the boat safely from the water requires okay, bent legs three, and straight backs. Two, three, lift. Okay, rolling to heads. Two, three, lift. Okay, split shoulders. Two, three, down. Okay, okay and down. Okay, then go and get the towels, wipe it down then. The boat is washed down before being put away. Go. The boat is put away in the same way as it was taken out. And then take it across. Watch the riggers. Any person involved in a water sport needs to be able to swim. This test is to ensure that if you capsize or fall in, you don't panic. Our test is simple. Swim four lengths of the pool, two on your front and two on your back, with the two on the back using the life-saving stroke. This is the stroke you need to tow the boat in the event of a capsize. Notice our rower is wearing his kit throughout the test. Nobody likes to get their face wet, so part of the test is to sit on the bottom of the pool to help build water confidence. At some time or other, you may fall in okay, from a rowing it. or sculling right, boat, and our drill lets an athlete experience a capsize in a controlled down. environment. Okay, so legs down flat, holding both riggers. Okay, in a moment I'm going to push you away from the side. You're naturally going to go that way towards the inside of the pool. You're going to turn upside down where you will naturally fall out of the boat. Okay. So when you're under the water, I want you to slap three times on the hull of the boat with both hands. Okay, and then come up. Okay. All right? Fine. Tapping the bottom of the boat right, during this exercise go. shows that the athlete is not panicking. In a real capsize, this is not necessary. Brilliant, well done. To help develop confidence and reduce panic, the drill is done in stages. First without skulls and from the side of the pool, then with skulls and the boat taken to the centre of the pool. OK, when we're ready, I want you to throw those blades away, grab the riggers, the boat's going to naturally spin over. Once it's over, I want you to slap on the bottom three times and come up. OK, so when you're ready then, throw those blades away. So get ready, go. OK, perfect. OK, we need to right the boat now. So I want you to stand on the rigger on your side. Watch the blade coming overhead. That's it. Keep standing on it. Good girl. OK, one hand on the boat, swimming to the far end there by the bows. Good, that's it. Keep your arm over that canvas there. Excellent. Okay. Then. After all this, the athlete can go afloat with confidence. Your club or coach should organise capsize drills for all your members, young and old. And as you saw, it can be fun. Regardless of what level you're rowing or sculling at, safety should always be your first concern. The ARA's Water Safety Code has been devised so that everyone can enjoy their time on the water. Rowing is one of the safest and most successful sports in Great Britain, from its grassroots at your club through to our Olympic squad. Our message today is, row safely, be considerate, and most of all, have loads of fun.